I want to ask about like if you're running a Shopify dropshipping store like CRO or your like landing page. Oh God, we'll be here for hours. Yeah, let's, let's, let's be here for 30 minutes. <laughs> Do you want to? Yeah, because like, I think the shop is self-explanatory. Okay, so to go on your point that you just made about you want to have stuff be native, we do the same thing for our actual Shopify store. So I'm going to make sure, yeah, that camera's still going. Um, so what you just said, like you need to make sure the content is tailored to the actual platform. We do that same thing with websites. So if we're running an ad specifically on TikTok and we have a Shopify store that's made for TikTok ads, we literally create GIFs and, or GIFs, whatever you want to call them, with the TikToks and we put them in our description. We make sure that, you know, we comprehend people are holding the product, people are showing it off on TikTok. And so we don't want to pull them onto their website and have a white background photo with no one holding the product, no one showing it off and having it be a natural looking photo. So for our whole website structure, we keep in mind how TikTok operates and how user friendly it is and how it just looks so fun and playful and there's people showing off the products and all that stuff. So that's how we also design our websites is like keeping that fun creator focused, you know, overall vibe onto our website. And I guess that's one of the ways that we optimize our conversion rates and overall average order value, the average amount someone spends on our site. So those are simple things. Yeah, are you doing, so first off, you're just saying that if they come from a TikTok UGC style vertical mm -hmm. video, some, a girl using the product, yeah. they're going to see that exact same type of content. branding content mm -hmm. on the website as well. So they understand like this is a coordinated customer journey basically. Yep. And so they feel like it's all connected. Yeah, that that's makes sense. exactly what we're doing. Are you selling single product stores? Yes. So it's just, you make, you pick one product mm -hmm. and you make a whole website around that one single product. Yeah. And then if they want to buy, if they want to buy a product, that's the only product they can buy and they click on it and they buy the product. Yes, we have that. But most of the time we will add an upsell bundle or something like that. But yeah, that's pretty much What would it. the upsell bundle be? Um, Multiple? So, but for upsells, essentially we'll do that. Like we'll have a bundles upsell or we'll do, hey, you know, you bought this two piece cozy sweater with sweats. Do you want slippers to go along with it as the actual uh, cart page? And that's mm. kind of it. It's is, that, fancy. is that pretty much any product though? Like if you find one product, you make sure you have like one or two like upsells that are complimentary? Most of the time. Sometimes if it's a product that people will more than happily pay or buy twice, buy two quantities or whatever, we will just focus on that and we'll just hit home with that. We'll have a post-purchase upsell. But yeah, if it's something where people are only going to buy it once, yes, we'll have a complimentary product synced up. It just depends. Okay. So let's say you have this hair curler. You're running a TikTok ad. You have the landing page that matches the same style of UGC. So they're reminded Then if they purchase, they have an upsell. Uh -huh. Are there like any other sort of like email marketing campaigns? Are there, is there text message marketing? Oh yeah, we do everything. <laughs> okay, explain, explain it. Um, that's a deep conversation. So uh, for SMS, I mean, we do very basic stuff. However, what you can do. So essentially what we do on a beginner store that we're doing, I don't know, let's say 100K a month, because that's a beginner, like that's only <laughs> a few grand a day. Uh, keep in mind, we pump to 50 to 100K a day, like with TikTok ads. So 1,000 to few thousand dollars a day, we will do SMS for recovering abandoned carts. We'll say, hey, you left this product in your cart. Do you still want it? And then if they don't reply, would you like me to try and get a discount for you? And then it'll say, hey, here's 10%. You can use SMS bump. There's tons of different apps for that. That one's pretty simple. We'll also do Clavio and we'll do pretty much the same thing as well as doing something like, hey, here's our weekly discount or here's our weekly new products. This is where we start to expand and go from like $1,000 a day to maybe $10,000 a day to 20K a day is we start to add in more products. That way our store doesn't look like a one product dropshipping store. It looks like a brand like a catalog. And so that's what we start to do as we grow. And we will reflect that with our emails and our text. We'll start to say, hey, we dropped a new collection. First 10 people to use this code get 20% off or 50% off or something like that. And so we'll start to integrate that into the marketing. But that comes once we're already scaling pretty aggressively. So this is where I want to actually kind of go a little more in depth because uh -huh. I think most people listening, I think they understand and they think that you find a product, you run an ad, you sell it. Yeah. But the real money is made in email marketing, text message marketing, follow-ups, building a list, yep. and selling, reselling the LTV, basically. And selling the actual company. We've done that a few times, yeah. too. Yeah, <laughs> okay, great. And so I just think you're probably so advanced, you forget what it's like For to sure. like yeah. be a beginner. Yes. And so what, so text message marketing, is mm. one, where, where are you getting their phone number from? It's on the checkout page. So there's a little button that you will add once you add an app that says, I agree to SMS and email marketing. And you add that. And then essentially now you have their phone number. You legally can market to it. So is this me. before they're purchasing or yeah, this is while they're purchasing, they're checking out the, the input first their step. information. Yeah. That's where you'll collect their phone number and email. 
Okay. And then how many different text message chains do you have? Uh, you can send as many as you want. This is where I go a little gray area. I personally don't manage this stuff anymore. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I don't okay. do the text or the emails anymore. But usually we'll send a few in the first few hours to try and really recover that abandoned cart. And then anything after that, I have people to, to actually set up the flows and stuff. But you want to keep doing it. Like, for example, I buy cigars online. So I have this company, Cigars Direct. They text me like every week. And I originally forgot about their site. And now I buy cigars like once a month because they're like, here's a discount. And so so if you hit them and actually give them value and they liked your initial product that they bought and they actually enjoyed it, then you will consistently be able to sell them, which is why I think having a good supplier and all that shit is like square one. You need to dial that in. Otherwise, like you said, email marketing, SMS, returning customers, those are all valuable, but only if the first touch is good. A good it's not good. Right. They will say, you know, yeah. screw off and they will hate you. And so dial that in first and get a good supplier, get a good uh, product quality and then you'll kill it. And I want to add to that. So the hair curler, like you said, that product only did good because we improved upon it. We paid like 40 or 50 grand to improve the battery life of it because the initial one was dog shit. It was really bad and everyone hated it. And so they, that was like the number one complaint was, hey, they, I love the product, but the battery sucks. So we had to pay a supplier on Alibaba to up the battery life. And that's when we started to actually have real success because we listened to our customers and kept improving the product. So I think that is, uh, you know, core value that you should implement if you plan to keep growing.